Yeah. Hi, right, guys. Hi. Hello. One wave. Can we do better than that? Two waves. Four. Yes. All right, good. Um, I have got the difficult lunchtime slot, so I appreciate you guys joining. Um, so we're here to talk today about the differences that you may see in people that you work with or that you interact with via email, Git, whatever that may be. Okay, so a little bit about who I am, that's me. Okay, I actually have that big belly in real life. Um, I've, got, I've got slightly grayer hair in my beard nowadays. Um, but a little bit about me. So I've spent the last 15 years in STEM, um, 10 years in leadership, working with different types of people, pre predominantly technical people. Most of my accreditations you see there, CIPD, Scrum Insights, Belbin, are about psychometric tools. Uh, they're kind of the HR people side of things. I am a non-tech that talks to technical people. That's kind of my background. Uh, I, I do this occasionally, not all the time. It's not my day job, but I do this. Um, as well as work with people at a coaching level to fully understand them and try and talk to them as people. Currently, my main role is as an engineering people lead at Calabra. Okay, so uh, at Calabra, we are an open source consultancy. We work with different companies to help make open source code that they might not be able to develop in-house. Um, there, I facilitate the role as engineering people lead manager. So I have a team of, of people leads that look after software engineers. Okay? Um, the side of, of, of me and the side that other people don't necessarily show is the more personal side of me. So I've been married for 10 plus years. I say 10 plus because then I don't have to remember it and I don't get in trouble with the wife. Um, I, have two, I have two boys, and that's good. Laughter's good because you're wearing masks and I can't see faces and online. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I have two boys. I'm based in the UK, if you can't tell by the accent. Um, I'm a gamer. I like all that kind of geeky, nerdy stuff. So today's session, three real key aims. Um, understanding what we mean when we talk about diversity and the different di types of diversity that you may encounter. Sharing some of, of what we've done at Calabra. So using some of our experiences and sharing that with you and, and, and taking that away. Um, and then looking at how we can link that to working with other people. So I don't know how many of you here are you know, working within businesses, but at Calabra, one of the things that we want to do is try and work with the best of the best. And so I'll talk about how we do that. Um, one of the reasons I got my big belly was not only from food or beer, but it's also because I'm lazy. So when I talk, when I talk, I'm going to ask you to participate a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, so my first question, I guess, to the room and, and online, if they, if they want to play along, is what does diversity mean? Okay, wide variety of people, such as? Okay, different backgrounds, okay. What do we mean when we say different backgrounds? Every single societal concept that we can talk about when it comes to our, our, our existence. Oh my goodness, that's an answer. Yeah, okay, so, um, so online it was, online it was um, every single societal construct that we can think of on our, on our existence. Um, have we got any advances on that one? Okay. All right. So, no, I mean, it's a great one. So when we talk about diversity... Oh, we've got one more. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, I would also say it's diversity of thought and viewpoint as well. Okay. So it doesn't mean anything if you have a highly diverse, like, ethnic, you know, group, and then everybody thinks the same. Yeah. And that's a great, it's a great point and it's a great answer. Um, so yeah, when we talk about diversity, there is so many different things. And I think sometimes we, we focus on the more prominent ones that society puts our focus on. Um, but there are a lot of, of, of different things. Probably the most common one that comes up is LGBTQIA+. Did you know that there was that many letters in the acronym nowadays? Does anyone, does anyone know what they stand for? There's enough of you to probably do a letter each. What does the L stand for? 
Oh, that's okay. That's good. So we got to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer. So that's an interesting one that in about 2005, the, the kind of the gay community started championing the, the use of that. That was being used as a slur. And they really tried to kind of claim that back. So the Q is either queer or questioning. Um, the I is a, is a recent addition. Um, when I was doing research for this, it, it was talked about, um, I think in 2016, looking at intersex. So how many, how many people are born with kind of that mix between male and, and female uh, genitalia? And then A is asexual. And then the plus is to catch any other kind of um, non-specified differences. So when I was doing this, you know, <clears throat> because we talk about how does this show up? Well, there's a little bit of feedback, so I'll step away. So how does this show up? Um, and I wanted to talk about how you can recognize it. So I found this, um, and if you couldn't tell by my personality by now, this resonated with me. Um, so, you know, the gender-bred person. So how do we identify? So what, what, what do we mean when we talk about our identity? Um, and, you know, is it being male? Is it being female? And there's some little points here, you know, around expectations. Then there was the attraction. So how are we attracted towards different genders? And then how do we express ourselves? And again, here, you know, how do we show off our, our masculine, masculinity or femininity? And then finally, our sex, which isn't just about the bottom and top parts, but actually it's kind of, you know, hair, body hair, face, etc. Now, obviously, June is Pride Month, um, and we have a well-being committee at Calabra. Um, and that well-being committee really, really kind of formed and looked at how can we help people, um, and probably the pandemic really kind of increased our, our involvement in that. Um, and one of the discussions that came up it, because of June was around how do we celebrate Pride. And there was a big conversation within our wellbeing committee about <clears throat> should we do something, should we celebrate that? Because actually some of the research that we were doing suggests that people still aren't comfortable, you know, just, just general research, not within Calabra, but research papers are showing that people aren't still comfortable sharing their kind of orientation, their sexuality, and being comfortable with that. Um, a UK paper showed two in five people were comfortable, right? Um, and so we didn't. This year we took a stance to not do anything within Calabra, but actually look at that research and plan ahead. Look at how we can make a culture that means next year we can go full out in force. Rather than do something half-hearted, we wanted to you know, look at and, and, and help people within our company do that. Um, we've got a person within Calabra who <clears throat> openly came out um, as, as gay and, and had some, some personal problems with that, and we facilitated a move and, 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 and talked to how we can support him um, because the environment that he then opened up in wasn't comfortable for him, right? So we will still do stuff to support it, but we think you know, there's a lot more work we can do around that. And I think that's a message across businesses. But there's different types of diversity. So we talk about cultural diversity. So um, my shaved head is not a choice. That's just nature, right? <laughs> Amen. Um, but I was on a call. I was on a call with um, one of my team, and he's based in India. Um, and, and this speaks to kind of a, a bit of culture and religion, but he joined the call and he shaved his head. And I said, yes, that's amazing, I love it. Great, bull brothers. Um, and it was actually to do with the fact that he'd had a death in the family. And it was part of, and, and I mean, I'm British, if anyone's seen the British office and Ricky Gervais, it was like the most awkward, cringy moment you could believe because I was so excited about this guy shaving his head and being like me. Um, but it's a learning. And I think what Calabra gives people the opportunity to do is learn about different cultures and I think you know we need to do more around um, facilitating that facilitating that discussion and I'll talk about one of the ways that we do that there's racial diversity there's religious diversity so one of the things that we do 
every couple of years at Collaborate is a meetup. You know, all of you have come in this room to the, to the, the conference face to face. Um, and we are a global company that operates in 35 different countries, that, but a lot of it is online. Right? And so we do a meetup every two years to try and get people together, to try and have that interaction, to try and create more meaningful relationships. But when we talk about religion, you know, one of the things that we need to think about is multi-use prayer rooms and things like that. Right? We need to consider who we are catering events and things for. Um, age is a big thing. You know, <clears throat> luckily in tech, um, we're, 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 we're probably on the younger side of things, but that is always kind of... Moving on, um, one of the things that we do within Collaborate is an intern program. Uh, so we look at getting kind of college students. Again, I talked about being global. Um, we get college students to work on some projects over the summer. We have like a 98% retention rate. So normally, if someone starts with us as an intern, they will likely end up being a Collaborate and joining us. So we look at trying to get people in young as well as supporting older people. Gender is a big thing. Um, recently, we've, we've, uh, one of my peers kind of got a promotion and went into a kind of business operations manager role, and she was very, very proud of being a woman in tech, a female manager in tech. That was one of her career aspirations. Um, and we promote that again. We try and champion that as much as possible at Collabora. Sexual orientation, I've always, uh, already talked about. And then disability is an interesting one. What do you guys think when I mean when I say disability? Okay. So yeah, but that's what so, so for the people online, it was around COVID and people that aren't able-bodied. Um, but it's also about mental disability, and that's a big thing. So. When we talk about technical people, some of them are highly introverted people. You know, when I'm talking to a room or talking to people online now and I'm saying, hey, play along with me and participate, and you're like, oh my God, can I leave this room? Um, I am a very extroverted person. So connecting with introverted people, you know, that's my role, is how do you do that? How can you make them feel comfortable? Um, and it is, it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge, learning curve, I think, and it's something that we've got to be active. Autism, the spectrum isn't the right word to use, um, and you shouldn't necessarily say, hey, you're, you know, you're on the spectrum or that person is on the spectrum. It, it is somebody with autism. And that kind of creates then different ways of dealing with people. So <clears throat> an example at Collabora is that we have someone who is super, super good at their job, right? But they don't want that face-to-face -face interaction. So my people lead team are focused on supporting the engineer, um, supporting the well-being of our engineers. That's that's you know they don't do any of the technical work. They are there for the people to just listen, chat. Um, but one of our guys doesn't want to join a video call, right? Like he does, not because he doesn't like his people lead. Actually, he really likes his people lead, but he 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 doesn't want. That, that social interaction, right? Um, and so we've adapted to that. You know, we, we do that through Mattermost. 
and we have the conversation and it's real time and we're talking and we're still getting benefit from having that regular meeting, but we're, we're meeting him at his level, right? And I think that's the super thing. When we talk about diversity, it's about adapting to people's needs, right? So, you know, it was called, uh, you know, yes, there are differences, but we're all human, right? And, and it's about adapting to that person, understanding who they are as a human being, which is the most important thing. I talked about <clears throat> mental health, um, or, or at least mental disability here. You know, when we talk about mental health, we talked about the pandemic, it is a big thing. So we do offer different things to help our people at Collabra. So one of the things we offer is an app. So if I set the scene with you at, at Collabra, um, we have employees and we have contractors, okay? So the employees at Collabra are um, based in one of our two office locations and then contractors are based anywhere else in the world, okay? Um, everyone has access to this app and this app allows people uh, kind of online coaching and therapy sessions that they can talk to someone about anything. Um, again, it's all confidential, Collabra don't hear that. Um, sometimes they see usage stats, but again, you don't know who, right? It's just how many people are using this app that we pay for. Uh, we have private medical for like employees, but then when we look at assigning rates for contractors, we consider kind of, we bump up their rate based on if they could buy private medical, if that makes sense. So we kind of give it to them in their, in their salary. And then we have mental health awareness training for managers. Um, and there's a conversation right now, because Collabra is going through a huge amount of growth around how we can increase this to anyone that wants it, right? It shouldn't just be for managers. That's a starting point, because they are interacting with people. But actually, what it is about is who wants this, who wants to be made aware. I don't know if anyone was in the keynote sessions. This morning, we were talking about um, suicide when there, was, when there was a conversation about leadership. One of the, the most impactful training sessions I've ever had was suicide um, awareness training, right? I can't say it's the best one because it's, it's super impactful. Luckily at Collabra, I can, I can say I've, you know, we've not experienced that, but in my last employment, we had someone complete suicide. And before then, in my previous organization to that, we had two people complete suicide, right? So it's a real thing. So we really need to focus on well-being. Uh, Collabra is super, super focused on, on well-being of our staff. I'm really proud to talk about that, you know, and, and, and talk very openly because I think that's where the conversation needs to happen and start. I talked about the well-being committee. You know, we have Mattermost channels, events. We do newsletters. Because we are a global company, we like over-communicate. I mean, I don't think there's ever such a thing as over-communication. If you think, oh, OK, like, communication's difficult, then do it. And if you think you're doing it well, probably double that, and then you might be there. Um, so I think it's about having that conversation. OK. So I've talked about Collabra and how we do with, deal with things. And I think one of the, the, the best ways to discuss it is around the culture manifesto. So this is our kind of code of conduct, if you will, if you were thinking back to, if you were in here for the, for the last session. And it's a way of us dealing with people and, and trying to help, right? So the first one is trust. So we implicitly trust our people. There is no kind of micromanagement. There is no, hey, what are you doing on a daily basis or anything like that? We trust people to work the way they will work best for them. And then there's be true, be you. And this is you know, I'm probably a good example of this, right? Me being my extroverted self and showing you my big belly and all of that jazz and talking to you about my children and them giving me grey hair and my beard. But we really, really want people at Collabra to be themselves, right? Because then they're going to work best. And I think that's, you know, it's... That's why we've got the people lead role, because that, that person, that leader, is literally there to just encourage them, to just talk to them as a human being. We have business strategy leads. They're focused on, on kind of the technical discussion. We have technical leads for projects. 
that they can go to if they've got a problem upstream in something or a problem with a merge request or whatever. But then we have the people lead that can be there to have that real life discussion. Flexibility is super important. I told you I had two children. So at Calabra, one of the things we look at is saying, hey, look, you know, if you need to go and do the school drop off or if you need to go to the dentist, then you, know, you can do that. If you want to have a siesta at lunchtime, you can do that as well. Um, but it's about the flexibility of working. And again, you know, it's a understanding that different people around the world have different ways of working, right? Um, you know, it's not a one size fits all. And again, that's the message I want to try and put across today is we need to adapt. We need to treat people differently as though they are individuals. As I said, you know, we are global. So we cover 35 countries at Calabra in terms of the people that we hire. Um, and so, you know, we promote that, we shout about that. Um, we try and incorporate that into our working practices, you know, holidays, celebrations, again, discussion. We are diversive and inclusive. We don't, you know, we don't discriminate against anyone. We don't say we can't hire into that country. Um, we, 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 there's a very fine line, isn't there, about positive discrimination, right? And, and, how, and how, do you, how do you deal with that? Um, at the moment, we're just saying, hey, come, come join Collaborate, it's amazing. And it is, right? I'm, I'm, like, I can swear by that. But we want people to feel comfortable um, and, and, and feel like they are working with a group of people they enjoy working with. It's okay to make mistakes, super important, not really around diversity, but I'm, I'm talking to you about it as it's part of our culture manifesto. And it's just a learn by doing, right? So it's being non-judgmental, and I think there's a link there when we talk about diversity. So it's okay to make mistakes in brackets as long as you learn from them, I think. I think everyone kind of agrees with that. Our real goal is about free and open source software, so that's kind of what the humanity, social purpose and community ties into. That's why we do what we do. That's what Collabra was formed about. And then a couple of other little things, right? So transparency is about being very open in who we are, what we do, what we work on. Um, no information is hidden unless it is legally or like HR tell us that we have to, right? So all information within Collabra is open for people to, to look at. And then everyone is able to have a voice. And so we have calls where we're discussing sales or new projects or customers. Anyone can join, right? So our CEO is on it, but one of our junior developers can join it. It's about them feeling like they're part of that journey. Um, so a quick example then of, of, of how we can kind of start getting to know um, individuals a bit better. Let's talk about cluster calls. So, does anyone know either of those characters? No. Tooth Fairy. All right, so that's a Tooth Fairy. So in the UK, in the UK, the Tooth Fairy, um, obviously, a tooth falls out of a child, they put it under a pillow, Tooth Fairy comes along, gives them money, okay? And I thought that was like a thing. I thought that was just everyone in, in the world. Like in the US, what do we have in the US as an equivalent? Anything? You have the Tooth Fairy, right? Okay, right? It, like The Rock, he was in a film called The Tooth Fairy, I think. Um, but other cultures don't have that. So in, in, in Argentina, this guy's Raton Perez. Um, it's like giant rat, basically. And he goes and takes teeth from children and leaves them gifts. Now, I guess it was kind of scary thinking about a little fairy taking things. What's she doing with all those teeth? But having a giant rat come into my bedroom and take my teeth, even though they're leaving me a present, I still think that's slightly scary. Um, but that's Argentina. France also have a rat. But again, what we realized was there was these differences, and they came from what we call a cluster call. So I talked about one of the roles of, of the people lead having those one-to-one -one conversations with our engineers. Another thing we do is just group a bunch of engineers together each month to have a call. Right? About anything you want. Now, if I say to technical people, hey, come on a call and we'll just discuss anything like that's not technical, 
<clears throat> people won't come on that, right? Like, um, and so I joined the business eight months ago, um, and there was some conversation, you know, how, how are they working? Uh, we had about 60% of people attending cluster calls, maybe a bit less, um, maybe 55. Um, and there was no structure to it. It was literally, hey, come on this call. And so what I did was I put a structure in place that kind of had an agenda, right? So, so again, people could see what we were going to talk about. And it started with technical stuff, right? Because if you can get people that are technically minded to start talking technically, then they'll start to feel more comfortable opening up to you as a person. And that's the secret source, right? So we saw it now spike up to 70% participation. Um, and people are still kind of now talking about it in a positive sense. So what we do is we, <clears throat> we say, hey, like, what project are you working on at the moment? Because some of these people may be working on different projects. What have you done since we last got together? And then is there anything else you want to discuss? And that's when stuff like Tooth Fairy and schooling in India and, and all of that kind of stuff comes up in conversation. But another thing to consider is that English isn't everyone's first language. And that's a big thing, you know. So the cluster calls is a great way of actually encouraging participation for people to start hearing English being spoken and learning their English skills. And one of the things that we've recently identified through this and, and, and through our growth, where we're going into you know, numerous different countries within Europe specifically, is we're offering English lessons to people, right? We're not mandating it, we're not saying you have to come, but again, we're offering it out. Um, and we're paying for that, right? Collabora is saying we'll pay for that and we'll pay for the time um, that you're gonna go on that lesson and it will be like two hours every two weeks. But it's, again, it's about making pe people feel comfortable, right? And, 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 and helping people feel comfortable talking to their peers. And I talk about that and that English barrier because when you're on cluster calls, you might have someone like me that's getting really excited about the difference between a tooth fairy and a rat. And someone might not be able to process that because when they're speaking to people technically as a kind of common language within the English vocab, but when they're then having to talk about feelings or other stuff that isn't technical related work, they have to adapt slightly. And so, you know, I had this slide because I've probably said it about three or four times already, you need to adapt to people. That is the key, right? So one-to-ones with people will be different. Talking to people will be different. One of the things we were looking at as we grew and grew the People Lead team was how do we conduct a one-to-one, -one, right? Because we had a team of 10, 15 engineers, and now we've got a team of 100 engineers, are they still getting that same experience? So what are our people leads asking? Um, and one of the kind of you know, directions that, that I, I gave or advised on was just starting with the question, how have you been since we last spoke? Right? Because then it, that will dictate what direction the conversation goes. It's up to the person that you're talking to. It's up to the engineer. Are they going to talk technically? OK, that's fine, right? Or are they going to talk personally? And then you can drive that and, and, and hopefully get both of those elements. You know, I've given the, com the, 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 uh, the example about tailoring the conversation from a dial pad meeting, you know, a, a kind of webcam meeting to a Matmos chat. There are lots of different ways to adapt. One of the biggest things is around tone and pace. Of, of, of a conversation. Um, one of the things that we've just done within Collabora is launched a leadership development program. So we're looking at kind of some, our, some of our highly skilled engineers and looking at te teaching them some leadership qualities, right? So time management, delegation, feedback, but communication. And one of the things that we did was look at um, what's called Insights Discovery, which is a tool that uses Carl Jung's um, psychology theory that says people have a colour energy preference in how they, t how, how, how they are. So they are either sunshine yellow, which is very outgoing and, and people focused, fiery red, which is extroverted but task focused, um, cool blue, which is introverted and task focused, 
or Earth Green, which is introverted and people focused. And we've given them that understanding and, and, and training so they can look at how can they then change their style with their teams. So, you know, I said I would talk or touch on the part about recruiting talent. So, you know, 35 different countries all around the world. Um, you know, <clears throat> what's going on in, in Ukraine and Russia? Super difficult. Okay, we've got people in, in both those countries. We need to know how we can support them. Right, so we were constantly reaching out to our guy that lives in Kiev when it all, when it all kicked off. Um, it got to a point where, you know, he doesn't want to talk about it, right? Like, he, he's got so many people asking him so often, he just wants to live his life, right? He just wants to get on. He would actually rather just do some work than, you know, we've got people in Russia and it's okay, how do we pay this guy, right? Like, because they're closing all the banks, like, what are we doing? And then you've got people that are in, in you know, there's a, a lot of our engineers in Poland looking at how they can support all of the, the refugees that are coming in to the country. And again, you know, <coughs> Calabra gave time. We went out actively to people that we knew were in those neighboring countries and said, hey, are you, are you supporting? Are you involved? Okay, well, look, because they're contractors, right? So they're billing us their time. But let's give them some time to do that. Let's make sure that we're supporting that effort as much as possible. You know, we don't want to say, oh, you were going and helping on the, on the border, so, you know, you're 10 hours short on your invoice. No, 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 let's give them that. Let's actively try to support that. But then again, you know, to the communication point, let's communicate with the business on what we're doing because you've got people in other countries that are asking, how are those people? Because there's a sense of team at Calabra, and that's one of the huge things is, you know, we do feel like a team. We're not a company, right? We, we, we are much more like a family than a, than a, com than a, than a corporate. And, um, and so they want to know how people are doing in those countries. So again, it talks to that point about over-communicating. So when we have our, our adverts out, we don't advertise rates, right? So you know, we, we have vacancies on our website, we don't say how much it costs, how much this role is, is going to earn you. And that's because we don't have a global rate. So we want people to earn a comfortable living based on their geography. Because if we put a global rate out at Calabra, some people in certain countries would be living like kings, while other countries or queens, let's be, let's be inclusive. Um, some people would be very well off compared to others. So we make it based on the geography in the country, taken into some of our office locations as a basis point for our research on those numbers. When we look at recruiting people, again, we open that up to anywhere in the world. We were remote before remote was a thing. Um, like Collab has always been a remote company. Uh, one of the conversation points is like, how do we stay ahead of it now? Everyone else is remote. Like, what makes, what makes us stand out now. Um, one of the ideas was virtual reality headsets so we could do meetings in VR. I'm not sure um, how, how that's going to go. Um, but then when we look at the recruitment pipeline, what we do and, and, and the process is we don't really ask technical specific things. Okay, so we, again, we trust that people can do that. We might talk through a CV, but we don't do any technical tests. Right, we don't test your coding as part of that process. Instead, you, you have a screening interview where we just talk through your CV, and then you get to meet some of our team and talk to them, and it's about fit, and it's about understanding culture, and it's about understanding our mission and our purpose. And that's what we hope you take away from it, and what we'll take away is, okay, like a little bit about you. How do you fit in? What are your aims? Is this the right thing for you? So, let's close out. Um, you know, diversity isn't just the LGBTQIA+, and then now you've learnt some new letters today, or gender or race, right? We also talked about age, disability, um, religion, and much more. It's about being proactive. It's about being aware. Um, I will often preach about the starting point is, is self-awareness, but you know, awareness is key. And, you know, and 
however you decide to operate, <coughs> whether it's personally or as a leader in an organization, um, it's about small steps to see what works, right? Um, and then also adapt, get feedback. I haven't talked about feedback, um, but you know, how do people feel by what we're doing? So that, you know, I, I touched on the whole, should we do something for pride discussion, right? The feedback from the committee was, hey, look, this research shows that maybe we're not there yet, right? And that's okay to listen to, to, to feedback. Um, so, you know, be proactive, take small steps. You don't have to change the world overnight. Um, and then, you know, adapt, right? We are all different. We are all unique. Everyone in this room, everyone that's watching online, you know, everyone is different, and so you just need to be aware of that. Cool. Uh, okay. Questions? One at the back. Hey there. Uh, hey. So yeah, I was the last person who, uh, or in the last session, who said I may need time to formulate this in my head as I'm saying it. But um, I guess like one of the things I'm curious about is um, like when you're interviewing someone, um, and this is more so around, I guess like identifying um, hiring candidates who may have like a mental disability or something. Um, how do you implement methods to allow them to like interview well um, when we're coming from a basis of like romanticizing startup culture where like some of these directors and CEOs think everyone should be like mingling and interacting and stuff like that um, because sometimes I found that there are people where you, they have these amazing CVs and it looks good but then when it gets to that traditional um, peer interview stage or uh, or like similar to what you're saying, like meet the team and like see the culture, or there's one of those stages where it's like meet with the director of engineering or CEO, they like completely, like like th there's just this like idea that like they aren't like all, like, yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know I, what I mean, right? Yeah. And, and, and yeah, um, so it's a great question. I understand. Uh, the, the people that we meet, I'd say the majority of the team are like that. You know, uh, the, the, our, our team are very diverse, um, and I think we're very understanding. I think how we deal with that is by increasing our understanding. So we don't have like tests, but we don't we don't write people off yeah. based on their personality, right? We don't write people off if they appear to be autistic or appear to have some kind of learning, dis right? We, we look for passion, right? We look for true people that want to be involved in FOSS, right? Like, it goes back to our culture manifesto. Um, we still, I guess, we still operate slightly like a startup company, so we've been going for 15 years, um, and while we've seen, you know, huge growth and, and have projected growth, we still like that feeling, you know, like the meetup that I talked about, the last one was in 2019, you know, it was much easier to get 80 people together. Um, now we're talking about 150 people all getting together, right? But it's about understanding and acceptance and looking for passion in candidates. Perfect, thank you so much. Okay. Hi. Hi. So I'm a technical writer and a lot of what my daily work consists of is creating communication approaches between individuals that might not necessarily have a technical background and individuals that do have a technical background, so engineers, developers, QAs. Um, but one thing that I find that is over-encompassing between both of those groups is um, unconscious bias, especially when it comes to workplaces that uh, have a very diverse um, work culture and also uh, peers, collaborators, et cetera, when they didn't necessarily come from a background like that. So one thing that I wanted to ask you, since you seem very knowledgeable on the topic, is uh, 
how would you, uh, or what tips would you provide somebody like me who wants to help inform these people to become comfortable with individuals that might not necessarily be like them, or individuals that they've never really um, interacted with before on like a one-on-one -on -one interpersonal um, basis? Okay, um, great question. I think it's about creating, uh, creating advocates, right? So. Um, going to someone that is technical and saying, how does this read? Like getting a bit of, getting a bit of feedback, right? So when you're creating that, that communication, going to the kind of different audiences, um, you know, so I talked about my, my incident with, with the man with, with the shaved head, right? You know, so he's based in India. I know I can go to him and ask pretty much any question that he wouldn't judge me on um, and be a point of, of source for that demographic of, of people, right? So I think it's about, similar to I have someone that's very technical minded, um, and yeah. I better wrap up, I've got, I know you've got a question, we'll catch up after. Um, thank you for your time, uh, I'll, I'll hang around if you've got another question, if you wanna chat, um, all right, thanks. <laughs>